Good afternoon. I'm Sandy Munns. I'm a fire behavior analyst with California Team 14 here on the Dixie Fire. And with me, I'm incident meteorologist Ben Bardos, also here on the Dixie Fire. My job as a fire behavior analyst is to look at the basic conditions that are going on on the incident and make reasonable predictions of what the fire behavior may be. What do we mean by fire behavior? Well, the fire behavior is influenced by three things, fuels, topography, and weather. We look at the grass, the brush, the timber, and we determine how likely is it to burn and how will it burn. Uh, fuels in this area right now due to drought conditions are extremely dry, and that is a very great concern for us and why this fire has burned so hot. Uh, the topography influences fire spread because fire burns uphill better than down, but wind is the more dominant factor. So the most dynamic element of fire behavior is the weather. Thanks, Sandy. Yes, uh, as Sandy just mentioned, uh, the most uh, dynamic element of fire is fire weather. So uh, they bring in specialists like myself. I work with the National Weather Service uh, to actually forecast the weather specifically for the fire uh, because it is such a big incident and such a dynamic incident, it's a, a complicated forecast. Uh, so with that, I'd like to turn our attention to uh, the weather for this weekend. So we have a pretty active weather setup going ahead here, starting tomorrow and continuing all the way into early next week. And I'll just do a quick uh, run through and some safety pointers uh, for you folks out there with what we've got coming up. So tomorrow uh, we have a cold front that is going to start approaching the Pacific uh, Northwest and ahead of it over, a f over the fire and areas around the fire, including like Susanville and, and communities surrounding the fire, we're going to see a southwest wind come across and pick up ahead of that front. So that southwest wind is going to sustain Friday into Saturday ahead of this front that's rather slow moving as it sweeps across the fire. Uh, we're looking at winds 25 gusting 35 miles per hour both Friday and Saturday with that system. So for me as a meteorologist on a fire, what I look for is, okay, it's going to be windy. Is it going to be hot? Is it going to be dry? And the answer is it's going to be dry and we are going to have some cooler temperatures, but it's still going to be warm. So we're looking for warm, dry conditions uh, with strong winds ahead of this front that moves through this weekend. So I'm going to have my eyes out on the fire, uh, seeing, seeing how those uh, conditions play out. And then moving Saturday into Sunday, we actually are going to have this front itself pass through the fire, and we're actually going to get some rain out of it, so that's going to help us. The question is how much rain. We're dialing that, dialing that in now. I will say that it looks like we'll get what's called a wedding rain, and as a meteorologist, uh, a fire, uh, fire weather meteorologist, uh, w what a wedding rain is that we look for is at least a tenth of an inch of rain, and what that means is that that's a rain that can actually soak into the ground and actually make a difference in how the fire could behave. So that's the threshold that we use is a tenth of an inch in 12 hours if, if we're getting technical about it. Uh, so we're, we, we have a good shot at getting that. Um, we could have as much as a quarter or even a half inch of rain in spots Saturday night through about midday Sunday. So like I said, getting those numbers dialed in, but we're looking at a decent rain possible this weekend. As that exits and sweeps across, it's going to go down to our south east here, and behind it we're going to have a northeasterly wind switch that's going to come across the fire behind it Monday into Tuesday. So kind of three phases of this front over the next few days where we have our southwesterlies ahead of the front that's going to really test our fire that way with those dry windy conditions. Catch a break maybe with some rain over the weekends uh, as this front pushes through, and then into next week we're going to have these northeasterlies behind, north behind it that'll test us again with some more windy conditions, maybe 12 gusts, 20 miles an hour. Uh, so some safety watchouts, as we call them, for you with the weather. Uh, when it gets windy, you know you want to tie anything down that could be blowing around because it is going to get gusty. Uh, just note that uh, because it is windy, that, that ups our fire concerns. So anything you're having to do that could spark a flame or something like that, please be cognizant of that. And when it does get wet, especially since we have a lot of burned areas and whatnot, that means muddy, yucky roads, things like that. So the long and the short of it is, if you're going to be out doing something this weekend, be very cautious while you're doing it. And it might be a good weekend to just kind of stay indoors and hunker down. Uh, that's what I've got for the weather piece. I'm back to Sandy. Thank you.
So how is this going to affect the fire here that we are currently working with? The last time we had, uh, up until the last time we had rain, we had conditions that provided for extreme fire behavior. Extreme fire behavior includes when the fire moves from the surface fuels up into the crown of the trees and consumes the foliage of the trees. It moves at a much higher rate of spread and pretty well destroys portions of the forest wherever it burns through the crown. We had that through significant portions of this fire repeatedly for many periods of time. Uh, once we got the rain, it took a lot of the heat and the energy out of the fire, which decreased the intensity. That gave us the opportunity to get in there and do a more aggressive attack on the fire and gain greater control and containment. Fire's currently at roughly 86% containment. However, <clears throat> there are some areas, uh, mostly up here in the north, that we have some areas that are uh, still working on being contained and we have a lot of heat in the remaining fuels, larger fuels like stumps and down trees that are burning very slowly. The problem is, is that those fuels can cause sparks and embers. And when the wind is blowing, it can blow those sparks outside of our control lines and land into receptive fuels and begin to burn again and we can have a fire escape. Now it's a very low probability of escape, but if it does we have a 90% probability of ignition, and that means that when we hind it, we could see the fire pick up and make another run. So at this point, the fire is winding down, but the weather is winding up, so we're building in contingency plans based on the fire behavior that could happen to see where this fire might go. So the southwest winds that Ben was describing would push out of this area right in here and up along this point where we have the greatest amount of heat. That would cause the fire to spread up into this open wilderness area, but uh, with the wind shift, it would then push it back into, and if we also get some precipitation with it, that will help us to also gain uh, control over it. So we're watching what the weather will do for potential escape. We're watching what the weather will do for helping to keep the fire contained and minimize or eliminate any spread. 